This is the STV News. Good evening. Police divers have been scouring riverbanks and lochs for an Aviemore bar and cafe worker. 33-year-old Argentinian Rod Falcon was last seen after walking from a nightclub on a freezing night almost three weeks ago. Friends say his disappearance is out of character. Ian Ramage reports. Police teams and other rescuers have maintained regular searches over a wide area. This afternoon, police divers switched their focus from the River Spey in the Dalfaba area of Aviemore to the banks of Loch Alvey a few miles south. Friends have posted video of Rod Falcon in typical high spirits. The Argentinian moved to Scotland eight years ago. He's recently been the soul of the party at a popular cafe by Loch Morlich in the heart of the Cairngorms. Colleagues have been shocked by his disappearance, saying nothing troubled him. He was really happy. He'd just been home to Argentina, had a month with his family. He he was he's happy. He like he is a happy guy. He has a lust for life. Could have been going to meet someone. He, someone might have been picking him up. Anything. It could it could yeah it could be anything. We just we just don't know. Nobody's nobody's reached out so far or, or had any bits of information that have been helpful to let us know why he was going that way. He left the Vault nightclub in the early hours on December the 11th after drinking with friends. He was captured on CCTV heading south without his coat in a sub-zero temperature. Extensive searches followed. Mr Falcon was last seen a few miles south of Aviemore. One report suggests that a friend had seen his footprints in the snow, but that came to nothing. Police searches are continuing in and around Aviemore. Police are anxious to hear from anyone who may have dash cam footage from that night, December the 11th. Mr Falcon's mother, who made the trip from Buenos Aires after hearing of his disappearance, is due to return home tomorrow, sadly at this stage with no answers. Ian Ramage, STV News. SNP MP Patrick Grady has been reinstated to the party after serving a six-month suspension for making a sexual advance towards a teenager. The Glasgow North MP, who previously served as the chief whip, apologised earlier this year after an independent panel ruled he'd inappropriately touched the fellow party member. But the Scottish Conservatives say now having the whip restored is a slap in the face to his victim. One person has died in a three-car crash in Aberdeenshire. The incident happened on the A19 near Peterhead yesterday morning, where the road was closed for more than six hours. Another person was taken to hospital as a precaution. Police are appealing for witnesses. A 50-year-old man is in hospital after a fire at a tenement flat in Glasgow in the early hours of this morning. Emergency services were called to a block of flats in the Denison area. Investigations into the cause are ongoing. More than 150 offshore workers have walked out in dispute over pay for a second time this month. Staff who work for Petrofac on BP and Repsol and installations want a pay rise in line with inflation and recently voted to reject the company's latest pay offer. Petrofax say they regularly review workers' pay and support fair compensation. Last week we issued new strike dates which will be two days every week in January going forward which will have a major impact on the operation of the platforms there. They've still not come back with anything to actually address that work-life balance. Now with 2022 drawing to a close and after a three-year absence, Edinburgh's Hogmanay celebrations are set to return. The three-day event is entirely sold out. 30,000 people will be gathering in the city to ring in the new year, along with stars such as Sophie Ellis Bexter and the Pet Shop Boys. Caroline Lewis has been in Edinburgh to see how the city is getting ready. As Edinburgh welcomes visitors from around the world to celebrate, preparations for its world-famous party are well underway. It's been three years since the city held its official celebrations, and organisers hope this year's will be one to remember. The response from the public has been overwhelming. I mean, now we have a sold-out event on the 31st. The, the people are arriving in the city already. They're here for three days of events. So people are back, they're excited, and they want to have a party. This was the last event in 2019, the same day the first outbreak of COVID was reported in China. Just weeks later, Scotland itself would go into lockdown. 
This year's celebrations have been scaled down from pre-pandemic levels, with less than half the usual number of partygoers. Although the event may be smaller, the spectacle certainly won't be. As you can see, the stage is almost set. The largest one that they've ever built here in Princess Street Gardens. But while it's still closed off to the public at the moment, as work gets finished, it'll be a very different scene in just 48 hours time, when 30,000 people will be down here to dance their way into 2023. For that magical midnight moment, this year's fireworks promise to be bigger and better than ever. Um, our designers sit there for hours, basically taking that music, knowing our entire repertoire of fireworks and making sure we get the best possible fireworks at the best possible time with all the music and then you've got one of the most intense firework displays in the world with so many people in the city police will be stepping up patrols and those heading to the celebrations are being advised to dress warmly and plan ahead whether you're experienced uh, street party goer it's your first time the event arena is different so please plan ahead please look at the website please think about how you'll get in and out safely and how you'll look after yourself uh, your you know your loved ones if you're with people and also your own uh, property it's a party 3 years in the making let's hope it once again goes off with a bang. Caroline Lewis, STV News. Now, a group of 27 men in Edinburgh have managed to lose an impressive £250 in weight between them. Every week, they've been attending the Man vs Fat Football Club, which encourages males with a BMI higher than 27.5 to enjoy playing the sport while slimming down. Our reporter Indigo Stafford went along to meet them. Achieving their goals in more ways than one, these men have signed up to a unique weight loss programme, helping them to smash their targets. The reason I joined the club is because I had gained quite a few pounds over Covid um, and then I was coming up to my wedding last year, went on a crash diet lost loads of weight in time, which is a good thing, but I put all of it back on and even more. So I needed something to get me back down to kind of my fighting weight and kind of maintain that along the way as well and get a wee bit fitter. This might just look like any other football team. However, instead of all the focus being on winning, it's actually more about how much they can lose. And one of the most impressive losers is Dean. Before joining the group, he had been struggling with binge eating. You start snacking here and there, thinking it's only a snack, but then you have two takeaways a week, then three, four, and it just builds up. I, I came into the club overweight, unhappy, unfit. It's the first time I've been able to lose a huge amount of weight. Um, I think it's been about £30 pounds I've lost so far. OK, it's 1.5.0.4. In Scotland, the proportion of adults in the heaviest BMI category increases every year. I didn't get to do much exercise because of my knee injury. Right. So. Here in Peffermill, this team has collectively lost the equivalent weight of a giant panda. But the changes aren't just physical. I think in terms of sort of mental health, you know, coming to a programme like this, whereby they can express themselves with other guys as well, but also there's a kind of common theme and a common goal is about the community, is having the same sort of like journey as well. This is about more than just a kickabout. It's about working as a team to make positive changes both on and off the pitch. Indigo Stafford, STV News, Edinburgh. To football and Kilmarnock's win against Aberdeen last night was the Ayrshire side's first in 11 years over the Dons at Rugby Park. The 2-1 win heaping more pressure on Reds manager Jim Goodwin as they slumped to their fourth defeat in a row. While ahead of the New Year Old Firm derby, both Rangers and Celtic racked up comfortable wins. Chris Harvey rounds up the Premiership action. your fill of the action. STV Sports, sponsored by Papa John's Pizza. Jubilation at full time as Kilmarnock celebrated a home league win over Aberdeen for the first time in more than a decade. First half goals from Scott Robinson in his first start in a year and a Joe Wright header consigning the Dons to a fourth defeat on the bounce. 
Aberdeen's Matty Kennedy's fine free kick only a consolation. We finished off quite a significant year for the club, you know, getting back into top flight, getting back to Hamden for the first time in 10 years. Um, 2022 will be remembered as a good year for the club and it was important that we finished it off properly in front of the supporters. I thought supporters were brilliant tonight. Um, so we're at halfway stage. I think we'll improve as we go along. Um, I think we're a wee bit naive early on in the campaign and we're miles away from being perfect, but there's there's enough life about us and enough encouragement and beating teams like Aberdeen and Knight here will give the players will do the players no harm. I don't think the players will try and hide away from anything. I think we'll all accept a responsibility and me as manager, you know, I'm the one who's accountable for it because they're my players. I've brought the majority of them to the club. And I stand by them. I still think we're a very good team. I don't believe we've became a bad team overnight. Um, but you know, tonight's performance was abysmal, and um, that's all I can say. Killy's win sees them leapfrog Motherwell. The Steelmen spurned a couple of chances to punish Rangers at Ibrox, but ultimately the home side ran out comfortable winners 3-0. Alfredo Morelos opened the scoring. Skipper Conor Goldson and the impressive Malik Tillman with the others. They stay nine behind leader Celtic, who were described by Hibs manager Lee Johnson as way above anything else in the Scottish Premiership. As they thumped four past the Easter Road side without reply, World Cup stars Aaron Moy with a double and Dyson Maida got the ball rolling, Kaigo Furuhashi rounded off the scoring. Edinburgh's maroon half came out on top in a five-goal thriller in Perth. The 3-2 win over St Johnston, seeing Robbie Nielsen's hearts climb up into third place at the expense of Aberdeen. A Lawrence Shankland penalty was followed by Alan Forrest's fourth of the season. Saints missed and then scored a penalty. Barry Mackay restored the two-goal advantage for the Jambos, but Saints weren't finished just yet, sub Jamie Murphy claiming their second to set up a grandstand finish. Dundee United ran out 3-0 winners at home to Ross County without playing all that well. A Conor Randall own goal and a Charlie Mulgrew bullet header putting them two up. County were reduced to 10. Awura Edwards receiving a second booking with just five to go. And Craig Sibbald icing the cake with a late curling effort to seal the points and lift the tangerines off the foot of the table. In the night's other game, St Mirren and Livingston each had a player sent off in a battling one-all draw at the Tony Macaroni. The point moves the lines up to seventh. Chris Harvey, STV News. Get your fill of the action. STV Sports, sponsored by Papa John's Pizza. OK, now here's Philip with the weather forecast. Say hello to a period of calm. To <laughs> sponsors STV Weather. Hello there. Well, as we start to head through the rest of this evening and overnight, today's showers are still clearing eastwards out to the North Sea. And for a time through the early evening, it will be turning dry, allowing temperatures to drop away and we will see a frost forming. Across Shetland and Orkney, we've got tightly packed isobars, so some strong winds here overnight. And then around midnight, we'll see this next area of rain and hill snow starting to work its way in from the south and west. So temperatures tonight, most places hovering around freezing widely between one and three degrees Celsius. Looking ahead to tomorrow through the morning, that area of rain will continue to work its way northwards, falling as snow across northern parts on ground above 200 metres, and then eventually becoming confined mostly to the very far northwest. A couple of yellow weather warnings out for tomorrow, snow and ice across the very far north, and then rain across central and southern areas, as we could see between 10 and 15 millimetres falling through the course of the night and into tomorrow morning. Later on in the day, the persistent rain turns more showery, but overall we do hold on to strong winds and around the coasts we could be reaching gale force. Temperature wise on average for the time of year reaching highs of between 7 and 8 degrees Celsius. Then looking ahead to Hogmanay itself at the moment there is still a bit of uncertainty but the potential for unsettled conditions further outbreaks of rain with highs of around 5 or 6 degrees Celsius. Bye bye. TUI sponsors STV weather. OK, that's all from the SV Newsroom for the moment. We're back from 6 o'clock tomorrow morning showing Good Morning Britain from everyone here on the news team to enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye for now.